I'm happy to be here to see you all again. Uh, every time I come here, I feel like I'm just uh, in the midst of a family. Uh, young and old. <laughs> uh, the, my topic today is that without forgiveness, there's no future. I wonder if you've also you have the habit of watching uh, Korean movies or Korean TV shows. <laughs> I have a, a Korean show I want to talk to you about today. And the scripture I'm going to talk about today is uh, from Matthew. Okay, uh, Matthew 18, verses 21 to 38. Uh, we're going to read it together. So if you have the uh, Chinese, uh, follow along. Chat Matthew 18, uh, 21 to 35. Uh, two verses. The first two verses, thank you. 21 and 22. Um, uh, Lassi, Beta, Junai, Do ye so sweet, Jua, what I hang that joy, or do she have a door to the Dotachi, Hoyima? Ye so sweet, or do they sweet, Fussy Tachi? Okay, let's uh, uh, I'll read verses 21 and 22 from Matthew 18. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. The name of the uh, the movie I want to talk to you about today is called Secret Sunshine. Uh, in the story, the character, the, the female lead character in the movie, his name is Lee Sun Oi. Have you seen this movie? Someone's heard about it. Uh, in the story, this um, lady uh, lost her husband. Uh, and she uh, took her uh, son to a, a, a city. Uh, which is where they get the name of the, the movie, The Secret Sunshine. Uh, she thought that she would be uh, very satisfied in the second stage or half of her life raising her uh, son in this, this place. And uh, she uh, quickly became accustomed to the lifestyle in this town, and her son uh, got well, started going to school and got used to the, uh, going to school. But not long after that, uh, the, the boy was kidnapped. And was murdered. And the, the woman, the mother, was uh, very upset, extremely upset, distraught. And, uh, you know, every, every kind of hope that she had in her life was gone. But she began to read the Bible and uh, uh, say the Lord's Prayer. And she felt like this uh, this faith uh, was helpful to her. She went to the prison where the uh, murderer was being held to visit the murderer. 
And um, to her surprise, the, the murderer said to her, God has forgiven me. We're, we're now brothers and sisters. Now, if you were this lady, what would you, what would be your feeling? Would you be really uh, happy? But uh, in, not this lady. She, uh, in fact, she, when and hearing this, she just collapsed. Now, in her thinking, what she thought was, wow, how could, how could God forgive this, this murder without my permission? Now, in, in, the, in her encounter with the murderer, the, he, he, he never asked her to forgive him. Yeah. The, the lady was in, in her idea of going to visit the murderer was that she would be the one sort of sitting on high forgiving this man but he said God has saved me and she was disappointed and felt like that her her son's life had been uh, given up uh, been taken for no for no good purpose in fact she even felt that uh, she'd been deceived by God and that she, uh, she um, uh, felt like her attitude towards God changed and she wanted to take revenge on God for this deception. She, um, sort of decided to declare war on God in, in the church service during the uh, praise time she uh, uh, <laughs> what? sang some pop songs during the during the worship worship time the singing time tried to seduce the preacher <laughs> Uh, so she became just like an enemy of the church, took actions as if she were an enemy, fighting against the church. Some uh, believers who um, gathered uh, did down below her house to uh, sing worship songs and pray for her at night time. <coughs> pray for her. She uh, threw rocks at them. So she became uh, very extreme. Uh, full of uh, hatred. And became so mentally unstable that she had to go be admitted to a mental hospital. So she, uh, in this period of her life, she was in a her own prison of hatred. I don't know if she ever read this uh, verse we read earlier. It's the one from Matthew 18. Uh, if those of us who believe Jesus, we're sinners too. Uh, when uh, Peter asked Jesus, 
Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Jesus told him, 77 times. 當時猶太人的風俗七次即係完完全嘅誒嘅數字. In the Jewish uh, cultures, number seven was a perfect number. 七十七次即係冇盡緊要算啦. And seventy times seven represented uh, countless times. 下文耶穌又講過一個誒比喻. In the following scripture, Jesus tells a, a parable. 一個僕人求個主僕 要是呃，宽恕去争到个七呃七千万纸嘅银纸。A uh, servant asked a king to forgive him a debt of an enormous amount. Uh, this version says ten thousand bags of gold. 七千个呢个数目咧系一生人都还唔尽嘅，当时环境嚟讲。Something that's uh, an amount of money that a person could not make if they worked their whole life. 但是那個主人念了慈心 But the, um, the king uh, was moved with compassion 要算了,不用還了一筆一生人還不盡的錢 He forgave the man the debt that could not be repaid in a lifetime 但是這個僕人放了出來 即係唔使坐監啦,即係唔使還錢啦。So, uh, this servant, instead of going to jail because he couldn't pay the debt, was released. 但係呢個僕人,但係佢又借過錢俾啲佢啲朋友啦。It uh, uh, so happened that this servant had also lended money to his friends. 其實好少,好少錢啫,十個人之間。Not not much. Um, uh, in this version I have here, it said owed him a hundred silver coins. Not Not a large amount. But this evil servant grabbed and began to choke this uh, friend who owed him a little bit of money. Said, uh, show me the money, show me the money. But the king heard about this. When the king heard that the evil servant had treated his friend this way, he changed his mind and decided that he would um, hold this servant accountable for the large debt that he owed. Uh, now in this in our own lives we do encounter this kind of situation where there's these little things that uh, we need to forgive or that we don't forgive others. But maybe we've forgotten that we uh, there's a greater debt that we owe to God that God has released us from. Um, the, the lady in the, the movie, because uh, she wanted kind of some kind of um, uh, return for her forgiveness, something in return for her forgiveness that she didn't get, she became, uh, she was uh, disappointed. Uh, a long time ago, there was a robbery murder in Hong Kong. At Braemar Hill. There were uh, uh, two uh, young, um, I think British, a young guy and young girl who were robbed and murdered. 冇幾耐呢個警方就拉咗一個中國男子。Not uh, long after that, the uh, police uh, uh, arrested a Chinese, a young Chinese man. 但係呢個外國人嘅家屬呢，就同法官同呢個劫匪求情。But the family of uh, one, I don't know, one or two of the uh, uh, murdered victims 
um, ask the judge in the case to uh, forgive uh, the murderer. At the time when I heard about this, um, I think it was 25 years ago, uh, uh, Mr. Yao said he is not uh, yet a Christian. And, and his uh, attitude or his thought at the time, wow, that's only, only Christians who would do that, forgive like that. If it was me, I, there's no way I would forgive like that. And I and as I compare these two the two uh, stories, I can see how see the contrast. Uh, one uh, in the, the from the Korean movie, uh, the lady was hoping for some kind of reward for offering forgiveness. Uh, but in the in the real case that, that we uh, I heard about in Hong Kong news, the family offering forgiveness were not looking for any kind of re, uh, reward. Um, uh, well, in, in the movie we see the result for the, the lady in the movie was she became mentally unstable. And I'm sort of assuming that for the in the other case in the real story they were able to feel a release from this um, hatred I'd also like to give the example of the um, South African leader uh, he worked his whole life uh, for the blacks in his country at the age of 43, he went to prison. And was in prison for 27 years. And during this time, he faced uh, persecution and torture from whites. In this kind of unfair, unjust life, after he uh, release, was released uh, from prison, he, he became the president of South Africa. I don't know if you mentioned his name. We're talking about Nelson Mandela. Now, uh, no, most normal people in this kind of situation would find this a great opportunity to take revenge. But he instead chose uh, to live peacefully among the whites. Uh, on TV. Uh, so his his attitude about all the wrong, unjust uh, things that had been done to him, he he forgave, like he erased it, wiped it away. Okay, so um, uh, Mr. Yao is telling us that he saw a, a TV, on TV a situation where the those uh, who had persecuted uh, Mandela before said the things that they had done, the way they had mistreated him, and and he in return responded with forgiveness. Uh, he was tortured in prison. And uh, afterwards, uh, when it was all over, or uh, after a period of time, the, those who had uh, persecuted him and tortured him uh, 
came to him crying and asking for forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness is the best kind of weapon. Um, political situation today in South Africa is much better than before. I want these lines I'd also like to share with you a little bit of my own personal testimony. I've uh, mentioned it to you, or I've, I've spoken about it before. Um, when, when I was born, and I, uh, oh, okay, I was, I grew up in a, a very, um, uh, situation full of anger. Uh, I was uh, when I was a little boy, my my mother carried me down from the mainland to Hong Kong. Uh, when I uh, I at one point became aware that our that my father had deserted us. Uh, at that time, the economic situation in Hong Kong was very bad. You know, getting a meal was difficult, getting uh, milk, I didn't really have milk, maybe some uh, aunties next door somehow got me milk. <laughs> It's in such a difficult and poor uh, environment. My um, mother was introduced to the man who became my stepfather or my adopted father. And this man uh, lived with us. But this this man, this adopted father, treated me very well. He he loved me just as if I was his own own natural born son. Every day after he got off work and came home, he'd buy something for me to eat. Uh, that time, a Chinese New, New Year, the um, uh, butchering of a chicken was an important, a big deal. And each time he would give me the chicken leg and thigh, he'd save it for me. At that time, I really had a sense of inferiority. So uh, he would uh, feel so happy about getting this uh, this cut of the meat from the chicken that he walk around showing everyone, look what I got. Up and down the street. But I knew that my birth father had uh, deserted me, abandoned me. So I hated him. So among my friends and my classmates, I really had no face. Everyone else had a, a complete family, a, a normal, a normal family, but I didn't. And as uh, my adoptive father treated me so well, the better he treated me, the more I hated my birth father. Uh, this uh, for for my life, for my whole life, this hatred stayed in my mind. 
and I was because of that I was just not able to be happy. And one time my brother said to me, uh, my, uh, he said your he told me that my birth father had passed away. Um, and he told me to go to the funeral home to see him one last time. But I uh, refused. He said, I, I, I don't know him. He's not my father. It's a, a heart full of hatred. And when I uh, was 17 year old, 17 years old, and I went to get my uh, chain, uh, get my adult ID card. Actually, my uh, Mr. Yao, but my my original uh, uh, surname was Ju. Uh, my brother uh, said to me, "You're you're not your surname is not Yao. Your surname is Ju." He said, "Now's your chance to change your name back to your real name, and if you don't do it now, you'll never. This is your last chance to do that." So now my I don't have the same surname as my brother. Okay, so, so th this is the situation forever. I will not ever have the same surname as my brother. Uh, yeah, we'll have different name for the, the generation after generation. So I don't have the same name as my brother. Why, why didn't I change it back? Okay, I, I, I didn't change it back but it, because I thought it wouldn't be um, uh, fair to my adoptive father. Until I uh, became a follower of Jesus, that's when I finally was able to forgive my birth father. Actually, not forgiving someone is a very painful thing. I had allowed that uh, hatred to imprison me my whole life to that point. And today I'm released from that prison. And life is full of joy. When I think about how I was before, Forgiving others is a hard thing to do. The thing that uh, moved me most to forgive is because I thought my, my, my consideration of Jesus. He was a righteous man. And who, for the sake of our sins, was put to death on the cross. When I think every Easter, when I especially think about this, uh, this picture of Jesus on the cross, I am especially moved. We all know or understand the kind of abuse and torture that Jesus suffered. He was whipped by the Roman soldiers. He was spat upon. When I face things that people do to me today that are not good, 
Though these are not really so bad. Because the debt we have from our sin has already been forgiven through Jesus. Like the evil servant in Jesus' uh, story, did he really need to uh, force the man who owed him just a little bit to repay him? So so I realize that as I think back and look back, I can see that now I'm, I'm released from the kind of uh, the unforgiving spirit and hatred that I had had as a, as a younger, young boy. Uh, with um, uh, forgiveness, what forgiveness means is that we can Forgiveness, sorry. Forgiveness gives us gives our life direction. It, give, it helps us to organize our life. Uh, it gives us motivation, but only through Jesus can we do it. Uh, sometimes just forgiving uh, doesn't uh, it not only uh, solves problems, but it can uh, also bring us some um, uh, happiness and release in our in our spirit. So as we live in Jesus and grow, we gain. Peace and joy. Okay, we don't have to. Uh, we don't have to uh, uh, focus on. Our, our suffering oh, and I'll always think of oh, we don't okay thank you we don't need to feel self-pity and we can try to then share with the others worries and life will be more uh, interesting and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> we are Christians. Um, so, uh, as Christians, our life uh, is interesting, exciting. Thank you for listening to my sharing.